Hey, it's me, Wendy, and today I'm gonna show you how to make this velvet dress. This dress is in a slip style. It's got adjustable straps, it's got a V-neck, it's got a semi-low back, and uh, there's two leg slits in the front. To make this, you'll need two yards of velvet. I went for non-stretch velvet, which makes it slightly easier to work with, but if you want to do it with stretch velvet, the power is yours. Velvet has been popping up a lot lately as a popular fabric. It's very luxurious, but is also very slippery and difficult to sew. Full disclosure, if you plan on doing this, prepare your patience. I'm gonna jump right into the tutorial, and then if you stick around until the end, I'll show you the dress that I found on the internet that inspired this entire look. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you after the tutorial. With two yards of velvet, we're going to cut out a front, back, and strap pieces. The main thing with velvet is that you need to be consistent with which direction is the fuzzier direction. One way will feel smooth when you pet it, one way will feel rough when you pet it. I typically make it so that it's smooth when you run your hands up the body and rough on the velvet when you run your hands down the body. To cut out the top of the front, I follow the shape of a V-neck t-shirt that I own to get the V as well as the armhole. And on the bottom half, as soon as I pass the waist, I started tapering it inwards into a point. Kind of like a teardrop shape. On the back, make sure you use that same t-shirt to trace out an armhole and where the center fold of the back is. But as soon as you pass the waist, lay down that front piece that you cut and follow that same curve to flare out the back as much as possible. So overall, the fabric we took away from the front gets added onto the back and the entire way around, it still makes a dress. It's just that the seam line will be a bit more interesting. We will start by adding darts to the front piece. We're gonna draw in a little V on each side. I mark from the bottom of the armpit two inches and three inches down, and that gets me a dart that removes one inch of fabric at its widest point. And then I go inwards three inches, keeping it horizontal at the top, and then sloping upwards at the bottom to give it a pointed dart. To pin the darts, I put in the pin right along the lines that I drew, going in one of the lines, coming out to the opposite side on a line, then go in from the opposite side on a line, and then come back out where you started on the line again. If I pin everything along the line, then I know that those two lines are aligned, and then I can just sew following the edge of the pins to get to the end of the dart. Fold over the fabric on both sides so that you're just looking at the dart and starting at the outside edge, just sew inwards until you get to the end of the dart that you drew. Here's how they look with the darts put in. When you're sewing the front to the back, make sure the excess dart fabric points downwards and you're good to go. The next step is to put together the front and the back. I lay them right sides together and pin all the way down because if you haven't experienced it yet at this point, you're going to learn that velvet is super treacherous and very challenging. And the way I try to make it a bit easier on myself is by throwing down a ton of pins and that helps to make sure everything stays where it's supposed to be and doesn't slide around like crazy. I kept pinning down the two sides of the slope and then once I got to the front bottom, I put those two straight edges of the back piece together to finish off the entire dress. When you're sewing, use a straight stitch and don't be afraid to take your time with velvet. I even use my front hand and my back hand alongside the sewing machine to make sure that the fabric doesn't slide anywhere. The key is not really to be yanking the fabric away from the needle in any ways, but just to make sure that the fabric is nice and taut as it goes through so that your top and bottom don't start misaligning. Now that we've attached the front to the back, the next step is to finish off the top armhole holes and neck holes. What I did was I laid down one straight stitch all the way around to help add some stability and then we're going to add the bias tape. Bias tape can be found at most sewing stores and you'll want to get folded bias tape so that you can unfold it along the middle fold, lay it down right sides with the dress and sew it along that middle fold all the way around. There's a lot of different ways to hem the top neckline but because velvet is very challenging I found bias tape was the easiest way. Once you've sewn it all the way around down the middle, the next thing that you do is you take all of the bias tape, flip it towards the inside of the dress, and then sew that down with a straight stitch all the way around. So I have the bias tape folded inwards, I brought a little bit of velvet over with me too, and when you're done, you're gonna have this straight stitch going all the way around, and it should be, hopefully, pretty clean. The last thing the top side of our dress is going to need is straps. So I'm going to be making these 
two and a half inch wide strips out of the velvet. And the way I did that was I cut little slits two and a half inches apart. And then in most cases, you can just tear the velvet down all the way to get a really straight cut. Also, this is a slightly less messy way of cutting velvet because cutting velvet is inherently very, very messy. <laughs> Look at these little furry things. What I do to help me flip it inside out is I cut two little holes in that rough edge of the fabric. Then I take a strong piece of twine and thread it through both of them. We're gonna tie a slip knot once I bring the twine all the way back and then tighten that so that when I'm sewing, I'm gonna keep the twine on the inside of the strap the entire time. Once I get to the end, I can pull on the twine and it will help me flip the entire strap so that the right side is now on the outside. I put in a pin to lock it in place, but we're gonna do a straight stitch down the edge, all the way down the strap, making sure that the twine stays on the inside and doesn't ever touch the needle. And that way it's free to tug through the whole thing and help you pull it inside out. When you've gone all the way from the top to the bottom of the strap, pull on the twine and then slide that pole all the way down to the end. And as you pull, it's going to start flipping itself. It's kind of satisfying. I guess maybe especially because it was velvet, it was extra satisfying. You could just feel its smoothness. It was great. Once everything has been pulled completely through, I cut off the end of the fabric that has the twine. I also cut off the other end because it's kind of gross. And then we're going to be tucking in the raw edges on one side so that we can sew it down and hide away all those raw edges. We're going to do a little stitch across the top edge where the raw edges were, and then a straight stitch all the way down the side so that it can totally flatten out the seam that we put in and help it look more like a strap. On the top edge of the dress, I just used a straight stitch to attach that to the two peaks at the front and the two peaks at the back. On the back, I actually used that strap fabric and made a loop and sewed that to the bottom. And that way you can take the long strap, tie it to the loop and adjust the strap length as you need. Finally, along the bottom of the dress, I cut in two slits. They were nine inches apart and then I hemmed the entire bottom by just folding over a little bit of the fabric and sewing it down with a straight stitch. That is how I made this velvet dress. If you like this tutorial, let me know. And you can also find more photos of this and other projects I make on my Instagram. It is at with Wendy. The only other thing I added to this dress was that I spotted these tassels at the fabric store. And I just like, I don't know, I gravitated towards them. They're kind of fun and they like graze your shoulders funny, but they're totally optional. Let me know if you want more velvet or less velvet, you can let me know both. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of my tutorials. Mine I modeled after this dress that I found on the internet. I thought the teardrop shape in the front was kind of interesting. I liked the leg slits, but this dress had this thing where they like let the cords hang in the back. I'm still not sure how I feel about it. I followed it because that way I could make adjustable straps. Like you can just chain to the length of the strap as you need by tying the knot in a new spot. But I wore this dress out yesterday and some people were like, what's with the cords? If you hate the cords, I understand. If you love the cords, I guess I also understand. They're kind of fun, but they're also kind of weird. That's all for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.